Good evening, and welcome to Artists of Color. I am Elaine Hall Corbin, your host, and this evening I have a special guest. My co-host host is Barbara Barrow Murray. Hello, how are you? I'm First fine. How are you? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> this evening we're going to be talking about art, culture, and what's going on in Roxbury the first week of October. And to begin with, Barbara Barrow Murray and Diama Battle from African Dance and Music will be discussing Welcome. dance, oh, thank you. African dance and music from the beginning. Right. And I thank you for both of you being here with me this evening. You're more than right. welcome. All right. Okay, I'll take it over from here. Basically, um, for those of you who don't know me, I am an old dancer from back in the day with Elma Lewis Dance Company. And so dance is my first love, television is my second love. Sorry, but it's the truth. And Diama and I go back a few decades. We won't tell how many. No. But <laughs> she says, shh. So we're going to talk about something that's coming up on October 5th with Diama, but we're going to do that from a retrospective perspective. First, we're going to talk about the past, and then we're going to bring you to the future. So uh, I want you to just sort of eavesdrop on our conversation about dance in Greater Boston. Okay, Diama, again, welcome to Arts of um, Color. Thank you. Barbara right? I'm on the right show, right? <laughs> okay, and I want to talk to you about your first, the first thing that we have ready is a slide montage. Uh -huh. That slide montage is one that's going to talk to us about, I'm going to have you describe as to why we're looking at this slide montage and who these people are. So roll that slide montage, please, and let us know what, what uh, that is. Okay, this is the first one. Turn around and look at that. Okay. Um, these, are, these are children that were in my neighborhood in Somerville. Um, this young lady's name was Barbara. This is Brian and, and Little Butch. And they were actually my first dance Mix company. Mix the music in, guys. They were actually my first dance company. And so we had, at that time, in the 60s, right. 60s, 65, um, taken them and trained them in different cultural dance forms. Okay. And so, 1965 forward, okay. I worked with those kids and, and, and taught them a number of dances that they actually performed on stage. So you were doing that in Somerville and Cambridge the same way Miss Lewis was, Alma Lewis was doing it exactly. here in Roxbury. Exactly, right, exactly. And so as it, as it, as it turns out, um, as the kids grew up to be young teens, and we moved into more of their type of dancing and connected it with African dance. This was the link that we wanted to make because um, there's a lot of history and culture that comes through in the performing arts that are not taught in school. So that's my, that's my foundation. So what aspects of dance did you train them at that time? I was training them in basic ballet, okay. tap rhythms. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, it was called ethnic dance. Yes, it was. And so they were doing they were doing their number to the drums. So you'd have Haitian work. You right. have uh, work from different countries in Africa. Right. I know you talked about going to Ghana. Now, how did that Ghanaian work okay. blend into your choreography and your productions? Okay. Um, earlier on, we were studying uh, Jamaican traditions, mm -hmm. and those Jamaican traditions, um, not only kind of in hairstyle, mm -hmm. but in, in um, physical actions, body actions, body language mm -hmm. says a lot. Um, I talked to some of the elders there, particularly around dances called Kumana okay. and Pokomania, and most of them had um, an African root. The, the Kumana had a, a specific Ghanaian link. Mm -hmm. which w made me want to go to Africa to look at or see if I could find things that were very, very close to what Kumana was about in terms of the history, which was connecting with the ancestors. So there's a lot of spirituality as well as cultural tra tradition that is learned through the performing arts. Now, I know you have a program that you're calling Legacy. Tell us what Legacy is. Legacy is, is really a, um, coming from those 1960s, 1965, okay. leaving a legacy with our children, and now it's the next generation, and now it's our grandkids. If there isn't a way for them to study 
their heritage through dance mm -hmm. and music and spoken word and all of the artistic forms that we know about in our own heritage. If there's no way for them to study that, they come up without the knowledge no or connection to the motherland, whether they call it Puerto Rico or Cuba or Jamaica or West, whatever. It's a global education. Now, let's talk briefly about the October 5th event. Tell us the exact name and what it is you're going to tie from the past to the present. Okay. The October event is called Festival of Arts and Culture. Okay. Uh, it's a fundraiser in order for us to be able to bring some of our research materials up to the present technology, if you will. Uh, we have a lot of vintage footage from places that we've been in different countries, and we want to try to bring that up to date. In that October festival, there will be tap dance classes for all ages. There will be diaspora dance, which is a, a way of covering different global areas, just touching gl different global areas in terms of the, the, the type of dance that's done there, what that history is, and how it connects to us as African Americans. Who will be the master instructors for that period during that? F for that production? period, we have Mamadou Job, who's um, a Senegalese man. His, his band is our featured band. Um, Mamadou is from Senegal, and so he's a guitarist, but he's also a little bit of a drummer. He's going to deal with rhythms and the spirituality of the drum, okay. and to, you know, to, to help people to understand what that connection is. Okay, so yeah. what is the main objective of what you're hoping people will get from the October 5th event? Well, we're hoping people will see the need. They will see the need for, for cultural uh, education classes not only to be in our schools, but to be in our communities, wherever we are. So will you be, are you available to be anywhere in the greater Boston area, or do we have to go to Somerville or Cambridge to hook up with you? Well, this is the thing. This is the beauty of our program. We've been traveling around this state. Our, our office really is based in Somerville. Okay. Our programs travel all over. Okay. So we are trying to make a base here, especially at the Roxbury Community College area, because there are so many international students there. And so if we can, if we can bring people to understand that this is necessary in this community, then we'll be doing something. We want, you know, it's kind of like waking up that, that thought process and making people understand that this is missing. We are missing this. Now, why do you think that that's happening? Why do you think there's that separation from the past to the present and with our cultural connection? Why, why do you think that void is there? Well, if you ask me as an educator, I would say because it's not properly taught in our schools. I would say that... Um, well, we never got real dance in school. No. Not we got, really, other than no. the polka. We got like the polka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I'm over Bush. Yeah. <laughs> right. We got the polka, we got Irish step dancing, we got flamenco. I mean, we got, you know, all of those things that are not culturally relative to our right. history. Connected to us, right. And so my thing that I've, I've been dealing with um, since I really started dancing is the diversity in our culture. Um, we can travel around the globe and we can talk about uh, the Brazilian influence in, in, in our heritage. Um, most, uh, quite a few African people went to Brazil. Out of Brazil comes um, things like the Samba, uh, Samba da Hoja, Samba of the Road. Right. Out of that comes the history of the Orishas. Right. Okay, right. so it's, 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 a, it's a tradition that is, is not going to be talked about in the schools, but you can learn it through dance. You can learn it through songs. You can learn it through the rhythms of the drums. And how are you able to continue to try to pass this heritage on? How are you doing that? And I'm, we're not supposed to talk about money, so I'm not going to talk about money, <laughs> but I am going to talk about the possibility <laughs> of having your organization funded. Tell me how that works, how that's been working for you. Well, the funding hasn't been working well for us, and, and, and there's a number of reasons for that. So we've tried to be self-sufficient, mm -hmm. uh, which 
doesn't always work, but as long as we can pull in bookings from the schools and different community organizations, we can survive a little bit. Okay. What is really necessary is for us to be funded for a longer, long period of time where we can at least afford to have people working in our office besides me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um, you know, we have artists that go out you know, that are available to go out to the schools, we can program them in sometimes in two or three schools at one time, but we need that base funding. What happened to us was that several years ago, organ funding organizations sort of changed up on their guidelines, and we fell through the cracks because, you know, um, we run into this thing where if you're applying for funds in Cambridge or Somerville, your programs have to happen there. Right. And so we always try to work with the Mass Cultural Council. Um, the, the, the other organizations changed their guidelines so that it was very community uh, specific in terms of, of maybe even drug related um, programs that came in there or, or other programs that, that would uplift the, the teens or give them support in schools things like that. But, but the culture piece got you, dropped. It got dropped. The culture you know, piece, right. you lose your music class, you lose your gym class, you know, and then they want to complain about our kids being overweight and, and what kinds of programs are in schools for them to participate in to work with that weight problem. Right. Um, dance is, is the perfect thing. Gymnastics is, is the perfect thing. Sure. Um, outdoor activities. But that doesn't happen in all of our schools. Now, I was looking at some of your older footage, and I saw many of my friends from back in the day. <laughs> um, I want to know if any of those artists are going to be coming to Boston to perform during this October 5th period. Um, I have to tell you, those are pioneers. Yes, we are. Many, <laughs> many of them are ancestors because they started back in 1972, 1973, in that time period. There are several ancestors in the group. And so there's, a, there's <coughs> another kind of overlay of people who are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so we're picking it up from there in tribute to them. Some of the things that we wanted <coughs> to um, address were those who are still here and in order to um, preserve their integrity and what they're doing is to recognize them as, you know, master teachers, whether they be drummers or dancers or storytellers. Valerie's one of our storytellers. Um, these are traditions um, that we want to we want to maintain. So we've got a new crop of drummers and a new crop of dancers. Wonderful to do that. So I won't see any of my old friends. You will see them I'll on the screen. I'll meet some new ones. <laughs> right, that's coming next. <laughs> You'll see them <coughs> on the, the screen. Ones. Why don't you ask a question while I'm losing, trying to get my mm -hmm. voice back. <laughs> well, who, who are, I'm sorry. I'm who are the back. pioneers? Who are the pioneers? The pioneers, and I might add too that when we started, we were right up on Highland Street, right. Fort Hill. Okay. We began up there as Boken Day. And that was when uh, Bamadileo Samarie was, was one of the most fantastic drummers around. Never. And he exactly. sort of trained everybody else. So there was um, Bamadile, there was uh, a young man named uh, Kojo Mpelelezi at the time. There was Stephen <coughs> O'Neill, who was part of that, and Trevor Daniel, who was part of that. Um, even my old man Eddie was part of that. Right, right. And Good then boy. my son eventually got into right. it, so it's a family affair. But those are the pioneers, and, and several of them, are, unfortunately, are ancestors. So for me, I need to um, bring that tradition forward and, and make people aware of, of where we began and how many doors we opened mm -hmm. so that the people who are here presently now um, know who we are. Now, did those drummers get their training from Baba Tunji? Yes, you had like Leon Mobley and Jao Min. Right. Yeah, they, they studied with Ola Tunji. Many of the drummers studied with Ola Tunji while he was at Alma <coughs> Lewis's. A master. Yes. Absolute master. Absolute yeah. master. And when yes. you have training from Ola Tunji, it was so clear 
that that training came from Nigeria directly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Directly. And, the, you know, their experience was just phenomenal. phenomenal. And when you look at the tapes, now I, I really get um, a pleasure and really joy in watching that. You can see that I would stand in the doorway sometime and watch him teach those kids. Yes. And oh, yeah. you can still see that work, uh -huh. the excellence of that work when you look at those tapes. So right. I hope that those ancestors, as you call them, have passed this down directly to these younger ones. Yes. And that they have the same techniques. Yes, there are, there are, there are quite a few. Um, Akila Stanley, her son, uh, Jay Merle, is a fabulous drummer. Okay. And he gets an opportunity to go back and forth to Africa and study as well. But he came up in that, he came up with the, you know, being the, the, the child at that time under those drummers. And so he has gone on to that often makes the best mm. artist mm -hmm. when you're sitting there as a little person yeah. and you're just watching your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother right. perform and then you ultimately learn how to do that just through osmosis right. and then we actually take the technique, mm -hmm. then you have it mm -hmm. and you make a wonderful artist. Right. Um, now for the fifth, can you give us a quick layout of what it is we should be expecting to see on that day okay. at night? At night, it's an all-day thing, obviously. We want to involve people in the workshops. At, six, at five or six, at four o'clock, there's a mix and mingle reception that we want to get the artists and the teachers and even, you know, a few members who decide they're going to arrive early for the night event. Mm -hmm. Get them involved in, in conversation and, and a few finger foods and, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. At seven o'clock, we're going to begin a, a what I call a, um, drum procession. We call it a drum call. But it's a procession where we have as many drummers and dancers come together as we possibly can. It's, it's going to include the artists, it will include our guest speakers, um, and our honorees. And mm -hmm. we, will, we will have a drum salute that moves around the, um, the gymnasium there as we have it set up. And while these people are coming in, they will also be seated at their reserved seats. We will, at that time, perform a very old dance in this country called Funga, which, awesome. um, yeah, which Pearl Primus brought here mm -hmm. mm, back in the, I want to say, 50s, mm -hmm. that, around that time right. period. And so now there are a lot of variations. But we have been able to um, put together some of the research that was done on that piece. So we're just trying to bring forward the actual history because Ola Tunji's music and Pearl Primus's dance were not really connected. Ola Tunji did the music, yes. Right. Everybody knows the song Funga Alafia, Ashe Ashe. Right. That's yes. a Yoruba chant. Right. And I think the word Funga may be from Liberia, but when um, when I actually read a book written by uh, Peggy and Murray Schwartz on Pearl Primus's life, right. she explained the fact that when they did come together, the, the musicians couldn't pick up the rhythm. Ola Tunji picked up the rhythm, created it, and, and, and Miss Pearl <coughs> always says, you're playing that too fast, you're playing that too fast. I think we have a picture of you coming up. We want to have you take a look at it. There it is right there. Tell me about this. When was this, Diama? This is beautiful. This was about... Um, Maybe seven or eight years ago. Seven, eight years yeah, ago. Yeah, and you're uh, looking good for seven, eight years ago, nice. sis. <laughs> you're working that shot. I oh, love it. Beautiful. Yeah, that was about seven or eight years ago, and a woman was doing a story on me and the okay. company, and she came to my house and took that picture. And so that's one that I use on my Facebook or. You know, anytime I need a, a, a picture that makes me look good. That's <laughs> right. You work that picture, right? So in about a minute, we're going to have um, an opportunity to look at Leon and some of the guys from back in that day when we were talking about. Right. Okay. Right. We were, we were doing something in those days. I was going to have you explain oh, that yes. once they roll this. Uh, just roll okay. it whenever you can, guys. Right. Um, and we're going to be looking at that. They'll be coming with it yeah. in a second okay. to tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, that, I think that dance was called Koba, maybe. Oh, okay. um, and, and, and that was one of the first, um, maybe. Oh, okay. um, and, and, and that was one of the first um, Senegalese uh, drummers that we were able to work with, drummer and dancer. Jean-Marie Diata and, and Ibrahim Camara were the people that actually 
took us under their wings, so to speak, and taught us, you know, several dances, which we used to perform at summer things. Right. And we'd go around the city and, and be in everybody's... That was in the 70s. Yeah. And we'd be in everybody's... Here it is. Bring the audio up. This is Ibrahim Kamara right here. And he was, at that time, the master musician for the drummers. Right. In the back, you have Yusef Crowder. Yusef Crowder was the first director of Boken Day, the first Pan-African dance company right. in the city. In the back, I think, is Trevor, or this is DeLay right here right, in the front. Exactly, exactly. And this is who most people trained with, along with Olatunji. Okay. And um, so it was it was our first um, performance. Who male dancers here? Some of them, uh, let's see, in the front you had Kojo. Here's Kojo right here. In the front was Sehu in front of him. Um, then you had all of the dancers. You had Alexis Crowder. You had Ajua Young. Uh, Ajua, she's in St. Croix now. Okay. She's the vocalist. Now Here we are rehearsing at the King School. This is Jafar Mansell. In the back there, waving her arms is Ajua. Well, we let them enjoy the rest of it. Yeah. And I'm Natan gonna, Jubilati is in there. I'm going to step off and let husband. you guys talk, and we're going to have Gloria Fox join you. Yes. Okay, but it was wonderful to have an opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. I'll yep, definitely nice be sugar. down the fifth. Okay. All right. Talk to you All later. All right. Thank you. All right. We should get a PSA ready because that's going to run out. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just go. Just get Gloria out there, please. Okay. Yes, yes. Hold on. I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Ain't nobody got yeah, to see your feet. Kill those mics, please. Swings at the first pitch and fouls his feet back into the stand. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Good evening and welcome back to Artists of Color. Thank you for joining us and my name is Elaine Hall Corbin and I am your host. And with me, my guest today is Diyama Battle from the uh, Art of the African, Art of Dance and, uh, dance art of black and, dance dance and, and Music. And also it's joining us now, <laughs> yes it is. And joining us now is State Representative Gloria Fox. Good, Good evening, Ms. Fox. Thank you for having coming to be with us today. I'm happy to be here. Hey, I'm so glad you are. <laughs> this, I must say, everybody, this is the first time I've had our State Representative on my show. And I'm really Invite excited. Invite me back anytime, honey. And I know you will. <laughs> I'm so excited. We've been talking about the festival, the art and cultural festival that's going to be happening on October 5th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have my co-host here with us, Barbara Barrow Murray, and she was talking about uh, back in the day mm -hmm. and the beginning of black dance within the Boston community. And what I wanted to ask you to begin with is, what is your, what is your, I guess, what are you doing as part as being part of this? How did you come to be part of the festival itself? Well, basically, I, as the director of the Art of Black Dance and Music, I'm producing it right. um, for the benefit of the artist, right. um, for the benefit of bringing them together, for the benefit of showing people um, that our dance and music has a place in the community. Right. Um, it's something that's not taught in the schools. It's something that our students and our communities, our families, our grandparents, we all need to make a kind of cultural connection within our, uh, within mm -hmm. our communities, within our families even. Because families often are, are, part of us are in the Caribbean, part of us are here, part of us may be in Africa while the other part's in Brazil. And so kind of looking at the globalness, if I may use that word, the globalness of who we are as an African American people. So we are the result of several strands of culture that has filtered through our own culture and made it into what we know today like as Afro-Cuban, Afro-Brazilian. Mm -hmm. We still have that Afro connection, right. but we need to know what that means. And so the, the history of dance is what has uh, brought me to this point. The history of who we are as a global people 
has brought me to this point. It was her dream that brought me into the picture okay, as well. Okay, that was going to her be Her dream next question. and her desire to make sure that there is a history and a future of African dance and music. Um, she is the historian of African dance and music in the Commonwealth and throughout the country. Uh, she has been widely known as a person for this. Um, what we need to do is make sure that young people, the new generation, uh, gets it. When I listened and saw the dancers from back in the 60s and 70s, the film that you just played, I got goose pimples about the way it was and the way it still should be. This is a world-class city, a world-class commonwealth. There are at least 53% people of color in the city of Boston. Most of those people have not been connected through art and dance and drama and culture the way they should be. So we need to be promoting us. And the only one that's going to do that is us. That is clear. And so this is the beginning of what I hope will be the future of a resurgence of art and culture. Now, there are a number of organizations that have been wonderful in keeping film and the arts alive. We're going to help to boost that as well. Hopefully, there will be a place at Roxbury Community College or somewhere else in and around the community where performances can be done, where she can practice her craft and teach and continue yeah, to, to teach, teach young people. That's why I, when she came to me with the idea, I jumped at the chance of being involved and to help as much as I could. Thank and you for that. And that was months ago. I, I thank her for that too. I thank her for that. And it's all good. So I see the connection. You know, I see where we as a people and you as a master teacher need to be able to bring that. Do you believe by doing this that we can be able to connect our cultures as a whole? Because if we begin to do that, I think that we can begin to, to me, begin to give our, each of us, all of us, uh, the self-esteem that we don't have right now because we don't know each other. We don't know about that connection. That's true. That's true. Um, it would also raise the level of respect between us as people, no matter where we come from. Yes. Because there's been a lot of, 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 of talk about not accepting this culture, not accepting that culture, when in reality those cultures are connected through dance and music, music. and folklore and all of the performing arts. And so that's where our history is. That, that, the, the performing arts for us is like a history book, wouldn't you say? Of course it is, yeah. of course it is. And it's a wonderful way to connect people as well. It's not a threatening way right. to connect people. Thank Boston you. sometimes gets very threatened yes. by folks introducing anything that's cultural. cultural. Uh, and so, you know, we want to make it clear that this is something to bring people together. This is an exciting time. Mm -hmm. Everyone is talking about, you know, bringing the community together, bringing the city of Boston together, and that's all we're trying to do. And we're trying to do this in a positive way through arts, through uh, the performing mm -hmm. arts, and through the gathering of food mm -hmm. and fellowship. Mm -hmm. Very important. Fellowship. Very important. Um, one of the traditions in, in Africa, like when children are born or when people are married, it's the whole community that turns yes. out. They can go from this size to old age to whatever. Right. And I've seen some people, I have to say, I've seen some people moving very slowly through the community, and this is in Africa. But when those drums start, you those would never little... Know <laughs> that they were ever moving that slow. You would never know. Those little old ladies, they get out there and they do their thing, and you know they give yes. the young people competition. And the young people stand there and they look at them and they say, oh, you know, that's what we need to do. Okay, well, it's, that's what you need to do, let's do it. And, and you can even add your own I thing still to dance. it, you know? See that? I still dance. You know? And, and you can watch us dance during Kwanzaa. Right, yes. That's a part of the celebration, the cultural celebrations. Mm -hmm. But we just should not just be doing it for at seven that. days. 
it you know, in continuous. the winter. We should be celebrating our culture all, all year, year round. round. And we say that every year. This is a part of how you begin to do that and begin to connect the dots. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's but like Tiama like, and I have been doing Kwanzaa for the last 20, 30 years. Some almost. years like that. Something like <laughs> oh, that. Wow. And we oh, yeah. always <laughs> have the 26th. That's glorious. 27th. 27th. Cool you, Chagas. Yeah, 27th. That's right. My 20th, favorite the 20th, day. The 26th day. The 26th is the first day of Kwanzaa. Yes. Umoja. And yes. so glorious day is the 27th, Kuji Chagali. Yeah. Self-determination. <laughs> and that's what it is. She's always self-determined. You better believe it. <laughs> that I do <laughs> know. <laughs> Secret of my survival, believe right. me. You right. know, when you were talking earlier, mm -hmm. and we had Barbara on the set, we are talking about some of the events, the types of workshops that were going to happen. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of back up and, and give talk us a that. talk about that a little right. more? Okay, one of, the, one of the workshops that I'll be teaching is called Diaspora Dance. I'll be team teaching with a gentleman named Zukan Bandele who comes from Antigua in the Caribbean. So um, I, I've asked him to bring his cultural experience, although he's been working with our company for, oh, I don't know, 14, 15, 20 years maybe. Um, Zukan brings a special kind of, of essence to the dance. His favorite dance is the Sabar technique. From that, I want to try to get into a little bit of the African-American connection that I see um, that bounce off of the steps that he does. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about looking at the links of culture and how that, you know, how that affects us, how that relates to us as African Americans. The other one is tap dancing. I find tap, the, t the rhythms of the feet have transferred from the rhythms of the drum. So the rhythms of the drum have gone into the rhythms of the feet. And that's a connection that not too many people make. And so Sean Fielder is the, the founder director of Boston Tap Company. He's doing, he's doing a workshop. He's also doing a showcase performance. I think he's going to bring a company of about eight or ten people. And so we're going to have them tap dancing around oh, Reggie, right. Reggie Lewis stage. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, so those are things. Now, now storytelling is another way of, of us preserving our history. Valerie Stevens yes. is very important. Um, um, she, she brings is. she brings the early African American stories and writers, and you know the whole theatrical thing to life. Yes. And she's going to be doing a workshop. And then Mamadou Joke, who is our 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 featured bam band, will be doing the nighttime dancing from nine to eleven. And so within that context, we have people who will be performing, doing short showcases like Bama Delay Drummers and Dancers, who is. It, whose name is still there because of his daughter. Um, so she carries the tradition. Marilyn and Sekou carry that tradition. Um, Mary Ann Harkless, Benkadi ben dancers. Um, she's connected with Sori Jabati from, I believe he's from Senegal, maybe. Um, but they've got the modern and the African connection that they do. So that, you know, ties that together. Um, let me see, I think that's probably it. And to, oh, and we have Jorge Aris with the Puerto Rico. He brings in the bomba and the plena, which are ac ac you know, connections to Africa. And then we have Cornell Coley, who's doing the Afro-Latin. As we said, Africa gente. <laughs> wow. This, this also is a reunion. And I, I'm not sure if, if uh, Diama has spoke about no. this being a reunion. So I got to give a shout out to all of our friends uh, from back in the day that are still active in the arts. Mm -hmm. They need to come back for this particular all-day event. Um, Ajwa, I'd love to see her and the sisters in St. Croix. I'd love to see them here again, Winnie Loving and all of them that are in St. Croix. So this is a shout out to each and every one of the folks that have been a part of the art of black dance and music mm -hmm in the past to come back home, to come back home and for a minute to Be share, share. Mm -hmm. yes. to share, to share, and uh, also to help Diyama plan for how this can be a integral part of the city of Boston mm -hmm. in the future. And so they might have to come back and forth a few more times, mm -hmm. but that's, that's all true. good. They need to come home every now and then. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, mm -hmm. we want to see them. 
I agree. Right, and and that's <laughs> that's the reason why this is a fundraiser, Gloria, because we hope to be able to do that at some point in time. And for people. Yeah, we, you know, right now we can't do that because of, of the lack of funding. But if we start with the seed money, we yeah, can we maybe can grow. Make it grow. Exactly. And, and, and invite them back as master teachers. Oh, and yeah, there's been a lot nice. of organizations and uh, folks, uh, patrons of the arts, I call them, that are really, really interested in what Diyama is doing. So hopefully that's going to grow and the program will grow as well. So mm -hmm. we're hopeful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hopeful. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have missed this opportunity for the world. It's. It's just going to be so much fun, you know. Um, just. Just win. getting people together. Well, I thank you for your idea, because it was your idea that began mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And so here we are. We planted the We're seed. only a matter of, of weeks, weeks away. Weeks away. Right? Weeks, days away. We, days away. More like days. days away. <laughs> we got you know, more like how, days. Yeah. It's amazing how time flies mm. because this we we've been working on this. For the last five months or so, maybe longer, oh, yes, yes. and uh, it is a good thing that we've gotten this far. Most people have heard about it. We've been on TV. Yep. We've got stuff that's been in the mail and everywhere I go. Naturally, I'm the flyer lady. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, since so we have the flyer everybody's lady, got a flyer. We have a clip that we want to show. <laughs> oh, another so, one. So. Um, we're going to, oh, well, I guess actually we don't have another clip. <laughs> we are going to. Movement. Along with weight loss, it's one of the many ways to fight osteoarthritis pain. For more information on managing pain, go to fightarthritispain.org. Welcome back to Artist of Color. Thank you for joining us. And again, my guest today is Diama Battle from Art and Black Dance and Music. So we're celebrating, we're actually not celebrating, but we're getting ready to have a wonderful event on October 5th that we've been talking about. It's called Culture, Cultural Art and Cultural Festival. Festival of Arts and Culture. Cultural Festival <laughs> Art and Culture. I said oh, that I was just a mouthful. It. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. So it's one, of the, it's one of the most absolutely fantastic events. And I'm hoping that everybody that's been listening to this show today will be there on October 5th. And joining us, we have a Miss Lisa Lee. Miss Lisa Lee is from Discover Roxbury. Discover Roxbury, at this same point in time, on this same day, is going to be having Roxbury Open Studios, which is now going into its 15th year, if I'm not mistaken. 15 years. Mm. And when we talk about art and culture, we talk about art and culture. Discover Roxbury's been around for, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years, maybe, I think now? Or so. About mm -hmm. that, around that. And when we talk about, as again, as I say, when we talk about art and culture, we talk about all the things that go on in our community. Well, right now, for the first week of October, we've got lots going on. Mm -hmm. So right now, we're going to have Miss Lisa Lee tell us what's going to be happening for Roxbury Open Studios. Well, and the connection. Roxbury Open Studios is a celebration or takeover, if you will, of the artists in the Roxbury area. We open up our studios to um, the public so they can come in and see how we do what we do and where we do what we do and, and hopefully catch, catch the vibe, you know? All right. So, um, we, and as I mentioned before, we, we're staging a takeover. We are going they to do be, every year too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> every year, our annual takeover, right. nonviolent. Uh, no, it's takeover. just a takeover. Right, an art takeover. Art so takeover. we're going to have sites in in Eggleston. We're going to have sites in Dudley, Fort Hill, Fountain Hill, Mount Pleasant area. So we're going to be everywhere, and the awesome thing is that there'll be transportation. So um, the, the vans that are provided will take people from area to area yeah. where they can get out of the van. It's like a hop on and hop off yep. where they can get out and, you know, take the tour in that little cell, cell area and, um, and go check out what, what's what. And, you are not going to want to miss this because 
Um, and, and let me tell you, you can't plan your tour by saying, okay, I've seen jewelry already. No, or you I've can't. seen leather already. I've been so, there. So um, let's go look at, you can't do it that no, way. No, you can't. Because there are no two artists alike. alike. And it's all just really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question, can you tell me some of, the, some of the artists off the top of your head that are going to be opening their studios to the public on that day? Or well, I should say that weekend. Well, I just happened to have brought a few things uh, that were created by some of the artists in my area, which is Fort Hill. I'll Good. be showing in Fort Hill. Um, a friend of mine, Wendy Ellertson, makes these fancy little business card holders mm. with faces on them. I want one of those. Wow. I, I mean, one of those. <laughs> that is isn't that cute. awesome? Yes. All right. So, um, and she makes big ones. She makes ones for iPads and so forth. Mm. Also, I have something here by, he's actually the director of uh, Discover Roxbury. Yes. Derek Lumpkins is a photographer, and this is one of his pieces that I purchased from him that I really liked. Um, so, we have some awesome photography. Tell me what the name of that piece is. That is a really good question. It's not on here. He didn't tell me. I didn't ask. Ask. I like it. So I, I do. I like it, it too. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it struck me. I mean, and if I walked up to where this was, mm -hmm. I may or may not have seen what he saw when he captured the picture, but he was able to put some, some old stairs in, <laughs> and in make it. such a way that it, it grabbed me. Isn't that awesome? It is, yeah. Yeah. And I also brought a piece of my own, which is this leather tree here. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's made out of leather, and it's also that. made out of decorative fabric. The leaves are made out of decorative fabric. So that, that's one of my pieces. Um, I work with leather, and I do a, a right. number of different things with leather. So uh, that's, that's just a taste of what Roxbury has to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really, really urge people to come out. Oh, absolutely. So um, the kickoff is right. Friday, the Friday yes. in the first week, which is the 5th, I believe. No, the 4th. Cor That's fourth. what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> um, so it's the 5th, and, and it's at the Museum of Afro-American Artists, which is what they used to call it. It's now the Indeed. Museum of the National the Center, Center of African American, African -American Artists. Artists. Oh. Woo! You thought yours was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an inhaler, please? <laughs> Is so, that why they shortened it to call it the Big Head Museum? I Probably, because so. nobody can remember. I'm so <laughs> of that. Who, who put that head there? Can I, I, I hug him? Because <laughs> I need to breathe. Oh. Um, anyway. I'm going to ask both you ladies a question. And whoever can come up with this answer first would be great. Do you see the connection? Yes, obviously. Absolutely. And Obviously. if I could just say that, I feel very honored to be Thank on the you. stage with you. And likewise. Because you and State Representative Gloria Fox, you all are the pulse carried from back when things were excellent and there, mm. there was no less than that. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. And less than that was unacceptable. Acceptable. That's right. So I feel, I'm not going to cry, but I <laughs> feel really honored that I get to share space with you and we get to kind of cross-pollinate, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and this is something that, that I try to make happen wherever I go because we don't connect as artists. No, and that's the reason why our festival, we call it the Festival of Arts and Culture because we need to begin to know what each other is doing and, yes. and, and how we can preserve that. Mm -hmm. um, a legacy is what we as artists are trying to leave. And it's a legacy that, that can be carried over generation after generation. And so we need to make sure that there are teachers to do that, like Absolutely. you mm -hmm. and, and your craft and, and like the dance. And, and those are all pieces. I'm not going to say pieces. I'm going to say pages okay. of a history Street book. book. Absolutely. Right. And pages. so it's important that that work gets shown, gets admired, um, that you have students to, to work the leather and 
all of the things that you do because mm -hmm. it's important. Absolutely. It's important. So I say as we move forward and we get closer to that, those events that are going to happen that weekend that we, and I know it will happen because I'll be telling everybody, mm -hmm. is that we always remind those or tell those that are, you know, that we cross paths with every day that, hey, on the 4th to the 6th of October, there's going to be a lot of culture and art and music and dance going on in our community. Come, you know, come here. Go there. Go to the Reggie Lewis Center. Mm -hmm. Go to all the spots that are going to happen with the Roxbury Open Studios. See what you're missing. See what you can connect. What are you going to get from that? Exactly. To bring to you and say, hey, I want to see more of what art and culture is in our community. I want to see more dance. I want to learn more about drumming. I want to know what that connection is. What are my artists doing? I don't see these artists every day. So I want to be able to connect with them. I want to know that this is what can be done. I want to know, hey, maybe I have a feeling of wanting to learn whatever art I've seen or right. whatever dance. I want to learn to drum. I want to learn something that I don't know anything about because it's part of my heritage and it's part of my culture. Exactly. So to work that, the connection, the connection is so important to me. And we do and have a I connection. I want to mm -hmm. see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do have a connection. Mm -hmm. uh, Discover Roxbury mentions your events mm -hmm. yes. on the website. And we've put and you in our program as right. well, yes. And I so, like that connection. And that's what we have to do. And one thing I find with Roxbury artists in particular, when we come together for these events, we, there is no competition. No, there isn't. You know, we're, we're, we make we're each a other whole. better. We're, yes, we do. Absolutely. Yes, and, we and do. And we can, we can fix it so that it can become its own cultural city. We artists are the ones who can raise that yeah. up. Absolutely. I mean, there are places around us that call themselves the cultural connection. Um, you know, while they have their own energy flowing into that, we need to be able to do the same thing. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Yeah, so that's, I agree. I just, that's why we do you know, what that, we do. And that's why I do what I do, <laughs> which, is why, which is why this show is called Artist of Color, and, because I want that connection. I want to always be able to have that connection. Yeah. And ladies, I always call you this because it's, to me it's a way of respect. Mama Diama Battle, I thank you for being on my show. I thank you for gracing me with your presence. Thank you, you know, for and having I me. Want, you know, I want to just see everything blossom. Lisa, been around for a long time. Things I learned about Lisa I didn't know. <laughs> had, had to remember these things. The Elma Lewis School. The Elma right. Lewis School. Oh, the yes. Yeah, <laughs> mm. Sit up I want to thank you, ladies, for being here on the show with me thank and you. being able to get this information out. And it's just been a wonderful, wonderful time for me. Good. Thank and you I for really having me. Thank you, Skull, it. so we much. It. You know, I really do. Oh, just, yeah, I can't wait.